Hey guys, Brandon here. I um, wanted to give a couple of uh, thoughts I had about the upcoming autopilot um, upgrade or update. Uh, there's been some rumors about it. Um, there's some good articles at electric.co. Uh, if you haven't checked those out, those are a pretty good resource. Um, and then of course, uh, there's always the occasional tweet by Elon Musk that um, you know really sets off the imagination. So the big thing uh, with uh, Autopilot in this next version, which is uh, version 8, um, is the ability for Autopilot to take a freeway off-ramp. Um, or, uh, we recently found out, um, also doing uh, freeway interchanges. So going from one freeway to the next, which is sort of an off-ramp of sorts. Uh, in order to tell the car to do that, uh, one just uses the um, turn signal, um, just like uh, currently, uh, to change lanes. Um, and I think in order for it to know that you want to take uh, an off-ramp, you have to be in the far right lane, uh, which obviously you have to be in the far right lane to take the off-ramp, assuming it's, a, it's on the right side. And then if you use the turn signal um, next to the solid white line, um, Supposedly it knows uh, that you want to take the off-ramp. So that's pretty interesting. Um, th uh, those features as isolated practices are, are not that helpful to me. Um, I noticed that... So, so um, the car can already change lanes now, but if, if I'm changing from uh, one lane that has a certain you know, flow dynamic um, of traffic and going into another one, uh, you know, negotiating changes of traffic flow is not a strong point for autopilot right now. Uh, there's no radar in the back. Um, there's a camera back there, and I don't know if, if uh, Tesla uses that data, and maybe that'll be part of the upgrade, is that it'll start looking um, from behind. But otherwise, there's just the ultrasonics. So, um, you know, if I'm trying to get off the freeway or uh, get into a lane change, you know, that's, especially if those of you who drive on the, on the West Coast know that, like, the interchanges, you know, you can have two, two um, lanes that are, like, heavy traffic and then the other two are kind of normal traffic just because, you know, you're merging onto a freeway with traffic. It's just the change in traffic flow can be quite prominent in those situations and um, you know I, I find that it's it's easier instead of like trying to get trying to set up autopilot so that it'll it'll make the transition successful it's, it's just easier just to turn it off and you know just do it myself um, so the convenience level is not there yet I guess um, that I would actually use it but we are connecting the dots um, very quickly here of everything that's needed uh, to do true ramp-to-ramp uh, -ramp driving. So the car is already an expert at um, you know just navigating the freeway and staying on its merry way. Uh, it can do the lane changes uh, when you tell it to, so it can detect if there's if the lane is open and and whatever. Uh, so it can do that. And now it's going to be able to do off ramps and it's going to be able to do freeway interchanges. Well, that's pretty much all you need for ramp to ramp um, automation. The only thing it needs to know, uh, the only thing it needs to be told, I should say, is like what lane it needs to be in and when. And it actually already has that data. So uh, what lane it's in, uh, it can tell with the camera and it also knows. Um, I mean, I mean, Tesla servers have um, maps of all the roads that Teslas are driving down, you know, down to the to the lane level. Uh, so it has highly detailed maps, so the car will know what lane it needs to be in, and will also know what, or will it'll know what lane it's in, and it will also know which lane would be the appropriate one, you know, to get onto which ones connect to the next place it needs to go, and that's the next data element is like who's telling the car where it needs to go. Well, most of the time we are, we're already, you know, you have your, your directions and stuff, your navigation. So the data is there as to what freeway is the intended target. 
um, or what off-ramp is the intended target. Um, you know, you're already supposed to be supervising autopilot, so I'm not suggesting this would be unsupervised, but all the data is there for the Tesla to know, like, okay, I need to go straight, navigate here based on, you know, for this amount of time, and then in order to get to that freeway, which is our next, which is our next turn, I need to be in this lane at this point to catch that off-ramp, and then, you know, that lane merges onto this one, and then the next you know, 10 miles later, then the off-ramp is this one, so I need to be in this lane to take the off-ramp, and then, boom, like, you're just sitting there um, uh, supervising things. So that would be super awesome, and the the key to that would definitely be, if, if the car is merging lanes and telling itself when to merge lanes, it definitely needs to be able to tell, like, okay, who's behind me, and uh, how fast are they going? So, uh, you know, I don't know, I don't know how that's going to go, but... I, I I don't think it's going to be to that level of integration yet on this next uh, on this next release, but one can hope. A uh, couple of other small things. Um, so like voice controls. Right now you have to push a button on the steering wheel and then hold it down as it records your voice and then translates it. Apparently you're not going to have to use the button anymore. You can just there there has to be a trigger word of some sort. Probably like. Amazon's Echo or something, and um, so anyway, that but that'll be cool. And then uh, it's also going to preview what it thinks you said on the dash, uh, which will also be very helpful. I don't use the voice command very much, but I would use it if it was more convenient and integrated. So um, we have an Amazon Echo, and. Uh, its functionality is a, limited, a little bit limited, but in what it does, it's very convenient just to be able to say, you know, Alexa, tell me this, whether it's a calendar item or the weather or play this or, you know, whatever. Properly integrated um, voice-activated stuff is very convenient. Uh, let's see. The user interface. Um, so they have been touting this as, like, the biggest change since the release of the Model S, actually. So, um, one thing that's supposedly coming down the line is that the, the vehicles that it shows, you know, surrounding the Model S as you're driving, it's going to show those behind you. So again, maybe they're going to be in, uh, incorporating rear view uh, camera data. Uh, but also, it's it's going to accurately show, like, if this car's turning, it's going to turn on your on your icons, and if this one is turning, you know, it'll show the angles and stuff of what it's doing. So that's cool. Every level of um, more accurate reality reflected in that uh, display is cool. I do a small adjustment. So the user interface, I think the directions um, is going to be altered. You know, we don't have any pictures, so I have no idea what the uh, else you know, what the uh, touchscreen, how different that's going to be. But looking forward to seeing what they've come up with. Um, I got my Tesla F. Let's see. I think seven was already out, and so I never had like the original uh, change. But I remember like you know seven was or seven point one or whatever it was was supposed to be like this huge change, and I knew what it looked like you know kind of based on um, watching Bjorn's videos and stuff. But um, I didn't think it was that drastic of a change. So now they're now they're saying it's a complete or the, the, the biggest redesign since the release of the car. Um, oh, the other thing about autopilot is that before, Musk was describing the autopilot changes as moderate. Last week, he just tested, texted, tweeted that the changes are going to be major. So he's upgraded his terminology. Uh, we'll see what that means, but uh, that's very interesting. And I think that might be partly due to... They've, they've been playing around with... Um, data analysis of the front radar um, data, stuff like uh, temporal smoothing, which I think has to do with like, you know, the, the radar is sending out signals multiple times uh, or continuously through time. And then, uh, of course, each of those signals of the same object is going to be slightly different. And so analyzing those um, per temporal space, per, per time or whatever is... I guess you can glean um, some metadata, meta, metadata or something that increases the accuracy of what the radar can detect. It's all beyond me, but I know they've thrown around the terms temporal smoothing. <clears throat> so we'll see where that goes. Um, what else? What else? 
I think that's pretty much all I've heard. Um, yeah, so uh, we were going to get uh, Elon's blog about it um, earlier this week, but then um, one of their rockets uh, caught fire and burned up, so that uh, put the blogging on hold. So now he's said that, um, you know, late this weekend, which probably means late Monday night. Um, so hopefully that's true. Um, the, the software is not going to be released for several weeks, though, so probably end of September. I think that actually coincides with when the iPhones are usually released, actually, now that I think about it. So we'll have new soft, new Tesla software and new iPhones in the air. Um, yeah, so um, I hope my car gets it really soon, and uh, I'll be doing videos and checking all that stuff out. So I think I hope this was interesting. Um, yeah, questions or comments, uh, go ahead and put it below. Don't forget the like button is there as well if you uh, enjoy my videos, and uh, I'll see you in the next one.